Hello everyone, I hope you are doing well. So in this video, we are going to discuss Geeks for Weeks problem of the day and today's problem is anti-diagonal traversal of matrix and it is a medium level problem. So the problem is very very straightforward and it is also apparent by the number of, uh, by the accuracy of this particular problem that is 81 percent and it says that we have been given uh, n into n square matrix and we have to print its anti-diagonals from top leftmost to the bottom rightmost one, right. So first let us discuss what are anti-diagonals and if you understand it then this problem will be very very easy for you. So if I have a grid like this, so this is a 4 into 4 square matrix and uh, let me just also draw. Normally what would happen, this is considered as a diagonal, right, this arrow and then this will also be considered as a diagonal, similarly this one and for the last will this one. And similarly on the bottom half as well, these are considered as diagonals, right. So normally when we talk about diagonals, we look at them like this. So these are called diagonals, but the problem asks us to find anti-diagonals. So what are anti-diagonals? These are just diagonals in the like uh, in the other direction. So the first diagonal would be like this, then the second one would be like this, and we have this one. So once I have drawn all of these, I just have to traverse the matrix in this specific order. So what will be the order? If I just zoom it in. So you can see that this is going to be the first diagonal that I have to traverse. This is going to be the second one. This is going to be the third one. This is going to be the fourth one. This is going to be the fifth one, sixth one and the seventh one. So notice uh, the starting points of these all, all of these diagonals. So how uh, these diagonals start? They are starting from the 0th row first, from the 0th row and then the first column, then the 0th column, then the first column, then the second column and then the third column. So these are, diagonals are starting from these cells. Now they start from the first row and the n minus n minus 1th column. In this case n minus 1 is equal to 3, right. Then second row, third column and then third row, third column. These are the locations from which the diagonals start. So basically we can divide this problem into two different halves. So if I have the first half will be this one where this is the first cell, then the second cell, third cell and the fourth cell. The second half for the problem will be this one where again this is the first cell, second cell and the third cell. So basically you will have to divide this problem into these two halves. There might be other ways of solving this problem but I solve the problem like this. So the first part for the first part you just have to traverse the 0th row and for the second part you just have to traverse all the rows uh, only comprising of the n minus 1th column. So you are going to only start your traversal from here and you have to increment let us say this is x going downwards and uh, this is y going rightwards. So y increases on the right. So you will have to increment your x each time because you are going down and you will have to decrement your y each time because you are going left, right. So these are the two coordinates that you will have to change. You have got your starting points for each of the diagonals. You have got your transition that is plus plus x and minus minus y considering that x increases downwards and y increases right, right. So since we are going to the left, we are going to decrement the y. Once we have got all of this information, we can easily construct our required vector. So in the final vector, we just have to print all of, we just have to store all of these elements in this sequential order only. So if I just show you my code, what I have done, I have initialized the matrix dot size. So since it is an n into n matrix, I can only take one dimension and then I have initialized my answer vector. Now, uh, first of all, this is going to be my first half. So first half, you see I am traversing the j index, that is I am traversing the columns. So I set my column, current column as j, right. Now I am starting a like uh, a simple for loop from x is equal to 0. So basically this will be starting from the 0th row and I have got my column which was stored in j, now I have it in y. So I have two conditions while y is greater than minus 1 and x is less than n. Since I am incrementing x, I am putting this condition x is less than n and since I am decrementing y, I am putting this condition y is greater than minus 1. So both of these conditions will make sure that my points x and y are inside the matrix only. So you see I have two conditions here and I have two incrementation or change operations here as well, right. So at each step I am just going to push back matrix of x, y and after it I will increment x and I will decrement y. 
So in case you didn't know, you can also put multiple operations which separated by commas inside this last part of the for loop. Right. Similarly goes for the initialization as well. So if I don't initialize it here, I can also initialize uh, y is equal to j here as well. Right. So it is actually the same thing. Now I have to traverse the second part. Right. So second half or it is better to write second part of the problem. So now I am starting from row 1 and going till less than n. Now again I can initialize it downwards. So I have to initialize x is equals to i. Right. Now you can see that uh, I have initialized my y with n minus 1. So y is going to represent my column here. And my x is initialized with y. Since my rows are different now, now so this is going to depend on the value of i. Now again while i is greater than minus 1 and x is less than n, I am going to continue this for loop and my change in x, x and y will be plus plus x and minus minus y. Now I can just push back this particular uh, value matrix of xy into my answer vector and at the end I can just return my answer vector. So you see I have broken the problem into two sub parts and the first part would be just traversing through the 0th row and the second sub part would be traversing through all the rows and the last column. Right. So with the help of these two sub parts, I am able to find the starting point of each of these diagonals. Now, if I have found the starting point, then I can easily find all the other elements by just doing the simple operation plus plus x and minus minus y, right? Because this will be the change in the element when I move on from one element of the diagonal to the other element, right? So at the end, I can just return my answer and this will be the final solution. So let me just quickly submit this and show you that this particular solution works. So you see it passes all the test cases and this solution is absolutely correct. I hope that you guys were able to understand the solution. If you guys did, then consider dropping a like on this video and don't forget to share thoughts in the comments because your engagement with this particular video really, really helps the YouTube algorithm to understand that this video is actually helpful for you and it will be able to reach much more people like you who want to keep solving new problems. So that is it for today. Till the next video drops, keep coding, stay safe, bye-bye.